Hey everybody, on our last video, we reviewed the venerable IBM ThinkPad 380D, circa 1997. This monster, um, you know, is huge in comparison to this, which we'll review in this video. This is the IBM T43, which came out about uh, 2005. So this is 1997. Okay, fast forward about eight years, and we've got this machine here, which is, uh, as you can see, we'll just show you the difference here in size, but it's much different. Thicknesses, it's a little bit larger screen as well. It's way lighter. Okay, well, not really. I mean, yes, it's lighter, not way lighter. This is definitely heavy. This is heavy but not as heavy as this thing, but it's still a beast in terms of weight as compared to uh, one of today's modern laptops. I mean, this thing is, is quite, quite difficult to hold. Huge difference though is the presence of USB ports, which is a huge bonus. Uh, I believe you can now run this, you can boot off of these USBs, which uh, helped me install Linux on here. A little dust in the fan there. We've got our modem port still in Ethernet. We still have the old style connector for the keyboard and mouse outputs here. Uh, there's pretty much nothing on the back. Uh, it looks like just a huge printer port right there. Um, I guess printers were still using those back then or were they already in USB? And then we have a finally a DVD drive. So they've now advanced. Uh, we no longer have... Um, sorry, we don't. we no longer have a um a cd drive we have a dvd but it's not writable i believe it's just a read dvd only and but it is a rewritable cd so you can burn cds at least all right so let's get this thing going here it is ibm thinkpad again before lenovo took over we've got a a centrino chip inside and this is faded it came, I believe, initially probably with Windows XP. There's an XP sticker on the back. Uh, of course, as soon as I got it, I um, installed Ubuntu on here. And so that's what we got running. And it's, you know, still functional to this day. I have, um, does it have Wi-Fi built in? It has Wi-Fi built in, I believe. That's really a make or break, uh, you know, feature. That's the thing nowadays, if you get an com old computer, if there isn't any way to hook it up to the internet, it's a really a pain. Oh, by the way, the, the um, battery in this thing is done. So it's not holding the time. So I gotta manually set the time um, on this thing if I can figure it out. Change values, okay, F5, F6. So I'll just put it to something more current. I don't know, whatever. Is that month? I'm guessing. Uh, what's this? The date? Let's see. Yeah, the date. Okay, and the year. Uh, we'll fast forward. So yeah, system date. I don't know why it goes back to 89, but uh, it's definitely not 2000. This was made in 2005. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 years old this is 22 14 years old and we'll just save and exit f10 and let's see yes no what did i do f10 save configurations and exit now yes yeah there we go okay yeah i don't want to mess up anything with linux uh if it sees a date that's you know changing maybe it's going to complain when it boots because it'll see files written a certain time and then it'll notice that the date of the computer is a different, an older time. Who knows what will, what its effect will be. But uh, yeah, the CMOS, um, there's a backup battery on here. It's I'm sure completely dead. This one of course is also dead. It's long been dead, uh, but it may not even check anymore. It doesn't care. Uh, whereas this computer has the, um, you know, it's set up to figure it out okay so we have lubuntu running lubuntu is uh, a lighter version of ubuntu which uses 
uh, a different, uh, a very light uh, desktop environment. I think it's LXDE. I'm not sure. There's a few of them out there. X, there's XFCE, there's LXDE. Uh, this is the one that uses the LXDE. I think that's the correct acronym. But in any case, the screen, of course, no longer has that slider like on this old one. Um, you can set up the brightness using some of these keys here. You can turn them on and off. You can set, uh, you know, here, there's the brightness keys. And Lubuntu is, um, you know, it runs fairly quickly on here. It is running the latest Lubuntu. I, uh, you know, I am doing updates on this thing. So we have a computer that's 14 years old. Not bad as far as, you know, weight and thickness. You know, it's definitely... Uh, you know, you can carry this thing around. The battery's shot, so you have to pretty much have it plugged in all the time, um, which is can be a little bit annoying. I'm going to log in here and see what we got. If I can remember my password. Did I do this right? No. It should be loading. Unless I type something wrong no it's getting there it's going yes no or is it complaining it's frozen okay well embarrassingly oh there it goes okay it's loading it just took a while it's uh, remember this is a 14 year old computer running the latest version of Ubuntu so okay but we're in we're in you can see here, we've got menus, okay? And if I can just let this thing run, here, we've got a few things running here. You can see Wi-Fi is up and running. We've got the battery displayer, which I'm sure will tell us that the status is horrible. Charging, energy full, 10%, energy now, 30%. So yeah, it's completely messed up. I'm not, I'm not relying on the battery at all for this thing. Anyway, let's run uh, Chromium. So this is, um, I don't think I can put Google on here, uh, uh, Chrome. It's a 32-bit version of Lubuntu. Uh, I don't believe this laptop allowed me to use a 64-bit uh, a version. So I just clicked on this thing. It's, see, it takes a little while to load, but let's see what happens. Okay, we'll check out EEV blog. Okay. And we'll see if it runs again. I don't think it'll pop up any copyright uh, notices, but here's YouTube. Takes a little time to load. Now you can you have to keep in mind it may not be the machine alone. It could be also the Wi-Fi. It's not, I don't know what version of Wi-Fi it's using, but it's maybe not the fastest one. So we'll try EEV blog. Okay, we'll click here. And we'll see, um, this is, by the way, a channel that I tend to, uh, to watch a lot because it helps with comp uh, help f fixing electronics. So. Hi, I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And my secret talent's a bit unusual. I just made it full screen. There it goes. On YouTube and a little bit of a delay there. Trust me, that takes a lot of talent. Roll the tape. Okay, sorry. Okay, so yeah, so it's seeking pretty quickly. Again, you know, you have to keep in mind that there's a there's a delay because of the Wi-Fi, but it's it's definitely watchable. Okay, I mean, if you want to watch YouTube stuff, I don't. What what are we on here? Three sixty. All right. If we try seven twenty, it's not going to work because I think again the Wi-Fi on here is too slow. Well, there it goes. Yeah, see, there's a lot of buffering. So uh, other than just, you know, perhaps having a, a bit of an issue with the Wi-Fi, I, I, it, I don't think it's the processor not able to handle the, the uh, stream. I think it's the Wi-Fi connection is just slow. Fantastic new technology that can make it work. Well, I smell bullshit. Okay. One person. So anyway, that's the, um, the machine running Lubuntu. I've got uh, LibreOffice on here, which will allow you to run, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff like Microsoft Office. 
you got your internet, graphics, um, various accessories. Here's Fractive. We can try this out and see how fast it is to uh, to to render a fractal. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's uh, it's not bad at all. We're getting in pretty close here, and it's you can see a rendering. It's I mean, yeah, it's starting to slow down. It's an old machine, but uh, you know we're we're doing pretty good, pretty good. Of course, now now it's starting to really choke up because we're really deep in there. And I'm not even, uh, I think it's automatically setting the iteration uh, based on the zoom. But this is not, you know, it's not as defined as it could be. I'll have to go in here somewhere to the uh, advanced settings. Is it advanced settings? Parameters, maybe. Where's our iteration setting? Um, do you see it anywhere? Because I don't. Properties, color settings. Oh, hold on. It could be under parameters, but it's it's down here. There we go. Um, no, still not there. Okay. Advanced, maybe? We go down here. No. Color? No. Huh. Where is our iteration setting? I don't get it. Should be under parameters. Zoom factor. Uh, rotation angle. That's kind of weird. Should be allowing me to set the iterations. But anyway, that's uh, Fractive. So it runs at a fairly decent clip. And then uh, if you want to turn this thing off, which we will do, I'll do uh, shut down. And we're going to leave, yeah, LXQT. So it's LXDE, I think, or something. Save work, okay. So that's the machine. 14-year-old computer. Okay, I just said to, did I say log out or reboot? I'm pretty sure I told it to, to reboot but or shut down. And we're back into the main screen for some strange reason. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit, how you doing? Um I can go into a prompt here. Let me uh, just do a shutdown here. Maybe that'll work. Except the login. Oh, it, I guess it did shut down. It just, it, there was a bit of a delay. It was doing something there and that's why it didn't uh, shut down immediately and it got us back into the login screen. All right. So anyway, just a quick video showing you uh, the evolution of IBM's here from a ThinkPad. 1920 uh, sorry 1997 fast forwarding to 2005 okay with the t43 and uh, i have one more laptop to show you in the next video which is a little bit newer ibm also a thinkpad so this is still all before lenovo's time again hope you enjoyed these video series on the ibm thinkpads and i'll see you soon please leave a comment if you've used these machines or you had them and uh, as always, good uh, thumbs up if uh, you enjoyed watching the video and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.